All right, so Q1 at a glance, we have $60.4 million. That's record revenue. That was guided for to be uh, 58 to 61 million. Next, we have the non-GAAP gross margin. That was guided to be 50 to 52%, nice. Um, what else do we have? The We have adjusted EBITDA, we'll scroll down a little bit. That was, so negative 8.4 million. This was guided to be negative 11 to negative nine. So a little bit on the high side, I guess. I'm also curious to see if they are still guiding for um, adjusted EBITDA profitability by the end of, what do they call this, fiscal year 2025, this date here, by the end of our year 2024. Um, EOP customer count. All right, and then end of period customer count, we have 1,031, this compares to 1,018, so a few extra there. And then cash, cash equivalents and short-term investments of 276 million. This compares to mm -mm, 298.9 for the period prior. I'm also not sure, maybe they're including the restricted cap. Maybe they're including this restricted cash as well. So we might have to look into that a little bit deeper, but either way, we'll leave it there. What else do we have? Seven-figure pilots. Okay, doesn't tell us too much. Um, okay, okay, okay. Oh, a new customer. Doesn't say the size of the customer. A couple new customers. Few new customers. Four new customers. Now these don't say the size of the customer, and typically with Planet Labs, if it's seven or eight figures, they'll they'll say that. So I, I'm assuming these are kind of inc inconsequential gains, but. Okay, and then it looks like we have Tanager 1 ready for launch. So the spacecraft arrived at Vandenberg Space Force Base on June 3rd in preparation for liftoff as early as July. Okay, so that'd be Transporter 11, I believe, with SpaceX. So it'll be the first of the next generation hyperspectral fleet, which will expand planet's imaging capabilities in the spectral domain to complement the existing imaging capabilities in the temporal and spatial domains offered by the planet scope, SkySat, and Pelican missions. Okay, cool, cool. So July, that'll be operational you know, by the end of the year for sure. All right, so revenue by geography. So we have North America being 54%. That compares to 50%. Okay, so that's North America's increasing. Asia Pacific, Japan, 19.65 uh, to 18, so shrinking a little bit. We have Europe, Middle East, and Africa, 26% going to 23. And then Latin America, going from 3.5% to five. Okay. And for a vertical market, we have, we have commercial shrinking, civil government um, increasing a slight bit, and then defense and intelligence is increasing. Okay. Okay, so we have strong revenue growth from Q1 and both annual, both 15% year over year growth. That's good to see. Um, I think this overall model is, 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 is expecting, yeah, 12.5% overall. So 15%, that's a little bit on the high side. Love to see it. Hopefully they can maintain that. Um, time will tell. Growing customer base. We kind of already went over this. The end of period customer count is 1,031. It's more or less linear growth. Um, 95% recurring ACV and greater than 90% annual or multi-year contracts. Non-GAAP gross margin, more or less the same throughout time. Adjusted EBITDA, like to see that, uh, seeming to be improving quarter over quarter. Again, like I said, they are expecting, oh, here it is. Targeting adjusted EBITDA profitability in Q4 of 2025. So again, Q4 2025, that's this period. So the period ending January 31st of 2025. So not two years away, but like, you know, I guess right away here. Now. I'm, I'm sure that as we go on here, it'll tell us a little bit more, but one of the major drivers for this lack of adjusted EBITDA profitability currently, that's going to be through stock-based compensation as well as just the kind of general build-out of the Tanager and the Pelicans. Um, these are the new new generation satellites. The, the removal of the stock-based compensation as well as the build-out or the development, I should say, of these satellites, this is what's going to ideally turn uh, Plant Labs from a adjusted EBITDA negative company to a adjusted EBITDA profitable company. So we'll keep scrolling through and we'll keep an eye out for those. All right, so guidance, we got revenue for 59 to 63 million. That's okay. Um, 
year over year growth percent of 10 to 17 percent so not great um, non-gap gross margin 51 to 53 mm, okay okay adjusted EBITDA of negative 10 to negative 7 million what do we have just okay okay and capital expenditures of 14 to 17 million this is also known as purchase of property and equipment kind of more or less the same as it's as it has been lately we saw that that pop in q4 of 2024 but things kind of seem to be you know a little more in check since then okay so finally let's take a look at that stock-based compensation so these are ascending yeah so 9 1.1 988 1, okay so more or less the same non-gap gross profit this is more or less the same gross margin seems to be getting more or less the same really all right so net loss where do we have stock-based compensation this is the one we want 15.3 for april 30th 2023 period 15.3 to 16.6 to 12.6, 12.5, 13. Okay, so not really decreasing. Yet adjusted EBITDA is looking good. So what is that caused by? Let's see, net loss. So net loss is actually not that much of an improvement quarter over quarter. And it's more or less on par with the adjusted EBITDA. So that tells me that we're looking for something a little bit more top line oriented than we are the actual um, stock-based composition, like I mentioned. Now, let me scroll around a little bit, see if there is a little more. Nope. So we're going to have to go to the big boy. We're going to have to go to the actual the SEC filing. All right. So we're in the 10Q now. Um, actually, before we get to the revenue and whatnot, we might as well go in order, look through the balance sheet and whatnot. So cash and equivalents, um, this is the most recent, 107.4. This compares to um, 83.8. Cool. Cash and equivalents looking good. Sorry, restricted cash and cash equivalents current. Um, that's looking good. Like to see that short-term investments. Okay, that's where we take the hit. Accounts receivable. Okay, more or less on par. Total current assets. Uh, seen a, they've seen a slight decrease by about you know uh, twenty-five million. I guess that would be. Property and equipment more or less the same. Goodwill. Hmm. Total assets. 701, we'll call it 702, compared to 675, um, decent. So so again, like 25, 25 million down. Um, and again, that's mostly from that short-term investment hit. So it's, what, that, what that tells me is they probably liquidated in order to fund their current you know, R&D, CapEx, building of the new satellites and whatnot, and the upkeep of the old ones. Now for liabilities, um, okay, that's also gone down. I really like to see that. Um, let's see, no debt. I, I, lo I love that about Planet Labs. That's something I can commend them for. No debt, love it, especially right now. I mean, not a good time to have debt. Um, total stockholders equity, 518 to 500. So, okay, um, let's find that revenue now. Okay, so 52.7 to 60, the cost of revenue, um, hmm, okay. Gross profit 28.1. This is up to 31.6. Interesting. R&D is down. Sales and marketing is down. General and administrative is down. Love it. Okay. Okay. That was, that's looking good. And keep in mind, there was that, that layoff. I don't think this will be pertaining so much to this quarter, but um, quarters previous. They did lay off, I think it was like 10% of their, their total workforce. This is during that era where everyone did the same thing. I mean, I guess layoffs are still happening, but that's what's you know causing the 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 opex to go down in the way it has. So loss from operations is not so much. Interest income a little bit down. Cool, cool. Net loss. So we went from thirty four point four million dollars negative to twenty nine point three, and the uh, the EPS negative thirteen to negative ten. Okay, and finally. I want to dig into the stock-based compensation just a little bit further before we kind of wrap things up here. All right, so for the stock-based compensation, the cost of revenue, so this has gone up for, okay, so this is a year-over-year -year comparison. Okay, so yeah, cost of revenue has gone up, research and development has gone down, sales and marketing down, and 
general and administrative is also down. So the total, um, the total expense for the stock-based compensation, 15 points. Oh, hold on, what's this? Capitalized to internal use software development costs and property and equipment. Hmm. Okay. So total stock-based compensation expense is actually 15.3 down to 13. So that's a that's a relationship that I like to see now. Um, I mean, it's a relationship that's going to have to continue in, in that regard. You know, if they are expecting to hit adjusted EBITDA profitability in like uh, soon, really, they are going to need to continue to work on this stock based compensation. Now, one more thing. Uh, we're going to look for the backlog. All right, so backlog, backlog. I'm wondering if they will. Yes, they will. Okay, so if they are to recognize, okay, so for the backlog, they have 219 million. Uh, we'll call it 220 million. They're expecting to recognize approximately 81% over the next 12 months. So what that tells us is they're expecting to recognize 178 million over the next 12 months. So starting from here, what do we have? We have 178, I said. Yeah, so we have 255. So either these numbers are too optimistic and and granted this the, the model hasn't been updated yet but yeah 178 they'll need to top up to that for sure so all in all uh, not a bad earnings not a terrible earnings i'm still going to continue to you know keep an eye on planet labs so if there's anything in the call or whatnot i'll be sure to report back but uh, aside from that thank you guys for watching uh, thank you for the hangout be sure to check out the patreon and i look forward to seeing you in the next one have an awesome day